Jesus makes the audacious claim that he can meet every human need. How does he do that? He says, I am the water of life. You have a thirst? Come. How does he do it? The lesson, the main big idea that I want to show you as we examine this passage closely and others is simply this. The thirsty human soul can only be satisfied in him. If you're seeking some other source of satisfaction, I promise you it is running dry as we speak. There's only one source and it's him. Can I show you? Claim number one that Jesus makes to this woman he claims to satisfy the universal thirst for your creator. Again, you're, you've, you've been made with this intrinsic desire to find worth and value somewhere, and you are trying to find it somewhere. Career, money, power, success, biggest house, most beautiful, somebody to tell me I'm worthwhile. You're seeking it. Look what Jesus says to this woman. Verse 7 through 10. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Time out before we go further. If you weren't here, we dealt with all of that last Sunday, that whole passage. But for context, I just want to remind you, what's happening here is there are, there's a relationship that there's a wall between, Jews and Samaritans. So the context is a relationship that's been ruined because of a difference of belief about the Creator, God. And so Jesus takes command of the discussion and says this. He answered her, If you knew, say this with me nice and loud, if you knew what, church? The gift of God. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that's standing in front of you, you would have asked Him and He would have given you the living water. Please notice something that he does not say, and this is the key to unlocking the whole passage. He's not the living water. Go ahead, look at your Bible. Tell me if you can find where he says, I'm it. He doesn't say that. Which makes us ask, I can see it in your eyes right now. Well, then what is it? So glad you asked. For that, you need to go just a few weeks later to where Jesus is standing before a large crowd. Large crowd, maybe thousands at the minimum, hundreds. And he yells out in a loud voice to this whole crowd, so I'm going to yell it when I read this. Look what he says. He says, If anyone is thirsty, see, he has to reach the person in the way back. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. And now you're screaming, what is that? And he says, look at this church, say this with me. But this he spoke of the Spirit. Oh, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So here Jesus reveals the gift that he's offering this woman at the well the gift that he offers anybody who will come, a thirsty soul who says, Jesus, I don't know why I was born. There's nothing that I find that even makes me want to get out of bed in the morning. He says, come, and I will give you this gift, and I'll put it in you, and it will become a spring welling up to eternal life. And that gift is the Holy Spirit. That's what it is that satisfies the human soul. Claim number two. Jesus satisfies the universal thirst for contentment. You're on a journey. You're looking for something to bring you happiness, contentment, satisfaction, joy, something that won't go away. And it leads you to a source. And that source is pleasure. Pleasure from somewhere. Look back at verses 11 through 14. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, 
in the well. It's, it's deep. Where do you get that living water? The object lesson, right over her head. She still thinks Jesus is talking about water for the body rather than water for your soul. Are you greater than our father Jacob? This is important. He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. She's reminding Jesus, listen to this, that Jacob gave her what she really needs. Water for my body. That's the kind of sustenance I really need. Stuff for my body. Look how Jesus responds. He says to her, yeah, Jacob's well. Everybody who drinks of that water, they're going to be thirsty again. Within a couple of hours, I bet. But everybody who drinks of the water that I will give him will say this with me. Never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him, this is the Holy Spirit, a spring of water welling up and eventually here's what it produces. Eternal life. What Jesus is trying to get this woman to understand through the object lesson is that every human soul seeks to find contentment through the satisfaction of the body. Let's, let's say some obvious things here. Water can satisfy you, right? But it runs out. Sex can satisfy you, but it runs out. Burgers and beer, they can satisfy you, but they run out. David says this in Psalm 16. At your right hand are what, church? For how long? Pleasures. Now that's a word that Christians were told, you're not supposed to seek those, and if you even mention the word, you should just zip it. Pleasure. That's like hedonism. Let me show you Baker's Bible Dictionary, the definition of happiness, okay? Baker's Bible Dictionary defines happiness this way. A deep inner sense of satisfaction and contentment. Or the soul's pursuit of what? Now wait a second, somebody who's been in Sunday school, isn't that the definite that first one? Isn't that the definition of joy? Yes, it is. So for those of you who would say, because your Sunday school teacher somewhere told you, joy and happiness are different. I'm sorry to burst his or her bubble, but in the Bible, there is no difference between happiness, joy, satisfaction, and contentment. They are all used interchangeably. And God, listen to me, those of you who were told wrongly that God is not interested in your happiness, someone lied to you. God is not only interested in your happiness, He is far more interested in your happiness than you have ever been or ever will be. Let me tell you what God is disappointed by. He's so disappointed that those who know Him are so satisfied by base pleasures when He offers you Himself. The third and final claim of Jesus is that he satisfies the universal thirst for connection. Here's what you're going to learn. You, right now, everyone in this room, you are on a trajectory. You're looking for two things, belonging and intimacy. And that search is leading you to some source, somewhere. You're getting that need quenched somewhere. Look at how Jesus finishes his conversation with this woman. Verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I'll not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Now, I want to show you something real quickly before we conclude this. In every single occasion in the Bible and in history, if you read Josephus, whenever women would come from town to this well to get water, they always, without exception, came in groups. Even if you look in Genesis where Jacob went and saw his future wife there, they're in groups. This is the only time. And I think it's pretty clear why based on what Jesus says next. She's there in the middle of the day in the scorching heat all alone. And it's because, I believe, it's because all the other women in town don't want to be seen with an immoral woman like this. So she is made to feel unworthy, unvaluable to everyone and she has to go alone. Look how it continues. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband 
for you've had five husbands, and the one you have now, he's not your husband. What you've said is true. I've been studying this woman for the last about 10 years of my life. She is one of the major points of my doctoral dissertation. 10 years I've devoted just to looking at this woman and everything that you can learn about happiness and satisfaction. And I have an observation. Beneath the gruff exterior of this woman, there is a deep desire for connection, wholeness, satisfaction. And she's finding it through a connection with a man. What she really longed for was the intimacy that every human being was made to crave. Let me tell you something. I have a wonderful wife. Anybody who spent even five minutes with her know I'm telling you the truth. She's a wonderful companion to go through life with. I have great kids. My son, Logan, my daughter, Peyton. I have, I have nothing to complain about. I have intimacy and good relationships. I'm telling you, if I try to make them the source of my satisfaction for this craving, eventually, what happens if they're gone? I'll dry up like a well. I love them, but they're not good gods. They're horrible gods. My horizontal relationships that I have with people, they're not meant to satisfy this craving that you have for belonging, intimacy, and connection, and wholeness. They're not. And the more you try to make them, the more dissatisfied you'll be. She longed for a kind of connection that comes without even having to say a word. You know that kind of connection. Like when you look into somebody's eyes and you know them and they know you. It's a connection that doesn't even have to happen with words. That's what she longed for. Adam and Eve had that kind of connection. That's why they were naked and they walked with God without any, broken, any walls between them. In Colossians 2.10, Paul gives us the answer. Look what he said. Read this with me nice and loud. And you have been made complete in Christ. Complete. Other translations say whole. We universally seek to feel complete because of a deep inner voice that says to us, you are incomplete without God. You were made for an unbreakable union with your creator. He's the only one that can give you that wholeness. A man won't do it. A woman won't do it. I know some people who they think, well, we just need kids. That won't work. They're going to move out one day. Friends, what well have you been going to? What well have you been going to? Jesus met this woman at the well that was right for her. If he met you privately at a particular well, where would he meet you? Has that well been satisfying you? Can you hear Jesus inviting you? Woman, come. Stop going there. Come to me. Man, stop going where you've been going for pleasure and satisfaction. Come to me. What you really crave is me. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pastor Luke with Island Bible Church. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below and to check out our whole YouTube channel. And if you're interested, you can also find more videos and the full length sermons on our website, hopeoflbi.com. Until next time, go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ.